Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to talk about the basics of construction drawing so we can draw objects that look three-dimensional and correct. Let's get started. This lesson builds on the ideas like isometric perspective, ellipses, drawing and dividing planes, and cross contours. These topics are covered in previous videos. Find links in the description below or click the card in the upper right to get caught up. Construction drawing starts with the four basic forms, the block, the cylinder, the cone, and the sphere. These will be the literal building blocks of our drawings. Then we combine and modify these simple forms using construction to create more complex objects. We use simple forms like these and gradually get more complex through construction to make sure the underlying structure is correct before we put the details on top. Starting with the details makes it harder to get them all in the correct order. Simple to complex is the approach we will use in construction. Let's use construction to modify these simple forms. One way we can modify these basic forms is by cutting into them. I'll draw a line across the side plane of this block using isometric perspective, then connect these corner points to the back corner of the block. By removing the top section, we've created a wedge form. We can make it more complex by subdividing the side plane to make it more narrow and connect those points to the back. By removing the sections around it, we have made a tapered wedge. Let's do something similar to a cone. By simply cutting the top section off of it, we have made a slightly more complex form called a tapered cylinder. We can add these modified forms to our list of basic forms. We will utilize all of these forms in construction drawing. We can also cut into basic forms to create irregular forms. We can use isometric perspective to inscribe lines on the surface of the block and carry them through to the back plane. Then we can remove the middle section and create a U-shaped block that looks correct in space. Using isometric perspective allows us to construct any kind of complex form from a simple block. We can also pull new forms out of a basic form in a process called extruding. First I will divide the front plane of this block using the X trick so the section I extrude will be exactly in the center. From the corners of the center section, I will pull lines out on the z-axis following isometric perspective. Then I will finish the new section by defining the front plane with x and y lines. Here we use construction to extrude a small block from a larger block. We can use this construction technique to build any type of complex form from a simple one. Now let's do some more complex construction drawing by combining forms together. Let's start with a chair using block forms. We'll start by using X, Y, and Z lines in isometric perspective to create a thin block in space. Then we can extend Y lines down and make a footprint to show the ground plane. Next, we'll divide the ground plane so each leg is the exact same size and attaches to the correct part of the chair. Since the legs are small, we can divide the outermost set of squares to make the footprint for each leg, and then draw lines to them. Now we will divide the top plane of the chair to construct the chair back. I will draw a thin rectangle on the back center of the chair and extrude Y lines up. We'll make the back rest as wide as the seat. We will draw construction lines across and up to help us place it correctly in space. From here we can draw lines to define the chair back. And now we have a chair that looks solid and three-dimensional. Good enough to sit on. And here's a look at all the construction it took to create this great looking chair. Next, let's draw a coffee cup using cylinders and blocks. Start by drawing an ellipse and use the major and minor axis to construct another ellipse in its center. Then bring Y lines down and draw another ellipse to make it a cylinder. Now we need to construct the handle and a Y line going down the cup will help us place it. Since the handle should be in the center of the Y axis, we can draw a plane to the side of our construction line and then subdivide it. We want the thickness of the handle to be in the center and the same size on the top and the bottom. So we can divide the inner squares on the top to create the thickness and mirror that for the bottom part of the handle. This gives us the attachment points for the top and bottom parts of the handle. 
Next, we can use X, Y, and Z lines in isometric perspective to connect these points and construct the handle. The part of the handle that connects to the cup is on a curved surface, so we need to draw another ellipse as a construction line. And now we can complete the construction of the handle. The handle is constructed, but needs to have some curves on it, so we can simply round off the edges of the blocky structure. This is a great example of simple to complex. The simpler block structure helped us get the more complex curves of the handle and make it look correct in space. Now we have a perfect cup to put our favorite beverage in. And here is all the construction it took to build it. Next, let's draw a lamp using cones, spheres, and cylinders. We can start with a cone, then mark the major and minor axis of the ellipse. We will extend the minor axis down to act as the center line for the whole lamp. Then we will turn it into a tapered cylinder by drawing a series of ellipses to show the lampshade is open. The innermost ellipse is offset to show the thickness of the lampshade. On either side of the center line, we will draw lines down to construct a cylinder for the neck of the lamp. Next, I will draw a sphere for the body of the lamp. I can use my pencil and finger to measure the space on one side of the center line and compare that to the other side to make sure the lamp is symmetrical. We can always use the center line and this sighting trick to check the symmetry of our objects. I will mark where the bottom of the lamp will be, and then using the same measuring trick, make a point on one side of the center line, and then move my pencil over to make that same measurement on the other side. I will draw the body lines down to these points, and the measuring trick kept it symmetrical. I will construct an ellipse to close the bottom of the lamp, and another offset ellipse below to represent the base of the lamp. We can make the lamp more decorative by curving the body lines. A construction line through the peak of the curve will help me align the opposite side correctly. And measuring again will keep the points symmetrical. To finish it off, we construct another sphere to show the top of the bulb inside. Now we have a beautiful lamp to brighten our day. And here's the construction it took to build it. Construction drawing even helps us build organic objects like a snake. Let's start with a tapered wedge for the head. From here we can draw an organic gesture line that builds the curve of the snake's body. On top of the gesture line we will construct a series of cylinders that change direction to show the snake's body winding its way back in space. We'll finish the body off with a cone. Now that we have the construction done, we can add a contour line to smooth out the snake's body. But something about it feels flat. If we look at these areas, the cylinders underneath show us that the forms are overlapping but the contour line doesn't show this. By making the contour line literally overlap itself at these points gives the illusion of three dimensions. We call these overlapping forms, and they are a really important way to create depth in our drawings. The cylinders also show us how the cross contours of the snake's pattern would change as it moved back and forth. This means that all the details we would put on the surface would look correct in space. And there we have our adorable little snake slithering towards us to say hi. And here is the construction underneath. In this lesson, we started with basic forms, used isometric perspective, divided planes, cut and extruded forms, and made awesome complex three-dimensional objects. Try this on your own. Find simple objects around your house and do construction drawings of them. There's no single right answer on how to construct, but if you use all of these techniques, you will be able to analyze and draw realistic and complex objects. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.